Okay, reaction rates. There are four factors that affect the rate of reaction. The first factor is the amount of surface area for a fixed volume of solids. The second factor is the concentration or pressure for solutions or gases. The third factor is the temperature of the reactants. And the fourth factor is the addition of a catalyst. Okay, so before I explain why these factors affect the rate of reaction, I'm going to ex explain why a reaction occurs and how it occurs. So for a reaction to occur, particles must collide with sufficient energy and the correct orientation. So this is demonstrated quite nicely by this reaction between an ethene molecule and a bromine molecule. So if the bromine molecule were to hit the ethene molecule here, it's unlikely that it will be, be able to react. But if the bromine reacts the bromine molecule were to hit the ethene at the double bond, it's likely for it to react. So we define the rate of reaction in terms of the change in concentration of, a, of the reactant or the product over the time that the reaction occurs. So when a reaction is occurring, you're either getting a decrease in reactants or an increase in products. And you can, you can represent this graphically on a graph. For example, if you're measuring for the products, the products will gradually, the concentration of products will gradually increase as the reaction occurs. Okay, so now I'm going to explain why these why these four factors affect the rate of reaction. So surface area, will, will the larger the surface area, the faster the rate of reaction. And this is because there is a larger area for the reactants to collide on. And this will increase the rate of collisions. And if there is an increase in rate of collisions, there's an increase in, of, in rate of effective collisions. And if there's more effective collisions, there's going to be a faster rate of reaction. So the second factor was the concentration or pressure of solutions and gases. So when we refer to a concentration or pressure, we're talking about the number of molecules in per unit volume. So this is the number of molecules in one centimetre cubed, for example. So the higher the concentration of pressure, the molecules will be closer together as there as will be more molecules per unit volume. And as a result, there will be a higher rate of collisions because if you were to imagine yourself walking through a crowded area, you're more likely to collide with someone else than if you're walking through a very, very empty area. Um, and if there's a higher rate of collisions, there's going to be a higher rate of effective collisions. And if there's a higher rate of effective collisions, there's going to be a faster rate. Okay. So the third factor is the temperature of the reactants. So when we refer to the temperature, normally we talk about being hot or cold. But on a molecular scale, we refer to the kinetic energy of the molecules. And if there's a higher temperature, there's going to be a larger kinetic en energy of molecules. Kinetic energy is just referring to movement. So if there's a larger kinetic energy, the molecules are going to move faster. And as a result, there's going to be a larger rate of collisions. Because if you imagine that crowded scene again, if everyone's moving a lot faster, they're going to bump into each other a lot more. And as I mentioned,
mentioned earlier in terms of collision theory and effective collisions, if the molecules have a larger kinetic energy, the more molecules are going to have sufficient energy to react with a, with, to collide with a successful collision. And therefore, the proportion of collisions will be more successful. And as a result, there will be a faster rate. So, the final factor is the addition of a catalyst. So I won't go into the specifics of what a catalyst does in this video. I'm hoping another video will explain that. But a catalyst is defined as a substance that will provide an alternate, an alternative route for the reactants with a lower activation energy. And if there's a lower activation energy, so the activation energy is the minimum energy required for a reaction to occur. If there's a lower activation energy, there's going to be a larger proportion of molecules that will exceed that activation energy. And as a result, the collisions will be more successful.